Hey there clan and welcome to my overall thoughts basically uh, on the Batgirl DLC for Batman Arkham Knight. Now it has been out for a while but unfortunately the fact that I was having computer issues I wasn't able to do a let's play of it and also it's been out for a while now but I still want to give my thoughts on the DLC in my opinion because I do have a bit to say on it. Um, I don't know if it will be a long bit because it is a relatively short DLC. It is only probably an hour at best. Like, if you rushed it, you could probably beat it in like 15 to 20 minutes in all honesty. Because it is not that long of a DLC. Um, and that seems to be a common occurrence with these Arkham episodes for Batman Arkham Knight. Uh, the Harley Quinn DLC, which I got for free... Uh, was really, really short. The Red Hood DLC, from what I've told, is really, really short. The Bar Batgirl DLC is probably the longest one, but at the same time, it's still really, really short. Even though it does give you an area to explore, a new area, a theme park, basically, it's still relatively short. Now, of course, I'll explain the plot of the Batgirl DLC. The overall plot of the Batgirl DLC is this. Uh... Joker has kidnapped uh, James Gordon and has said to Batgirl and Robin, if you involve Batman, I'm going to kill him. So come and get him. So Joker is trying to kill Robin and Bat Bat Batgirl because of on Valentine's Day, apparently, uh, because his, his, it's the Joker. He doesn't need a freaking reason. But his reason is he believes that Batman is feeling too maternal. So I'm going to get rid of the kiddies because I want the Batman I want. You know, I want my old Batman back. You guys are ruining him. So that's his logic. I will say this. The Joker and Harley are fantastic in this DLC. But bar none. It's Mark Hamill and it has classic Harley Quinn. It has the original Harley Quinn outfit which just made me squeal like a schoolgirl because seeing that in, in Arkham just made me absolutely squeeve. I love the, how Harley looks in all of the Arkham games but the classic Harley full body suit, little bell thing up there, gesture style, I absolutely love it. That made me squeal like a schoolgirl. And just the overall Joker as well. This is a good Joker DLC in my opinion. It definitely, definitely comes across with the reasons why the Joker did it. And also there is a little bit of a story to the park. Now I don't want to spoil that aspect but it's more of a little side question. There are a couple of mini games that actually evolve a little plot, like a little mini plot that tells you of the origins of the, the theme park and also the owner of it and it's kind of dark. Extremely dark. Like Joker level dark. Um, so the DLC is good in a way in my opinion. Uh, giving you the overall Joker-esque kind of thing. It definitely gives a lot more Infinite on the Arkham Joker. It's very disturbing. I will happily admit that. But overall, beyond those little tidbits, the DLC is just not that long and it's overall not that entertaining. Coming from someone who is a massive Batgirl fan, like I absolutely love the character of Barbara Gordon. Like, if you need proof of it, this is the entire Gail Simone run of Batgirl in New 52. This cemented how much I love the character. Even in the Batman animated series, I love the character. But this, in my opinion, is the definitive Batgirl. And I will say this, though. The, they actually took, the Arkham team took a lot of inspiration from this um, Arkham, the, from the New 52 Batgirl, as you can see, with her costume. Now, it is a bit more Arkhamified. The Arkham's bat suits or basically suits have always had their own unique look to them but in my but the Batgirl costume in my opinion heavily it takes a lot of influence from this the new 52 bat, bat, Batgirl including the hair at, uh, at the back in my opinion that's always been a staple of the character in my opinion the hair flowing at the back even though it's kind of stupid for fighting because you grab it and bang 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 but whatever uh, not that, by the way. Uh, but yeah, they, they, I definitely like the look of the Batgirl uh, costume. The, the model looked absolutely fantastic. They got Batgirl. It, it was Batgirl. And she even felt completely different fight-wise. Like like all the other characters. Like she, never, she didn't fight the same as Batman. She didn't fight the same as Robin. She didn't fight the same as uh, Nightwing. She didn't fight the same as Catwoman. She had her own unique style. Which is something that I have to give praise to the Arkham series and Rocksteady. Is that even they could easily have recycled Batman's moves. And just changed them a little bit with some of the characters. But instead they gave every character their own kind of unique fighting style. Which I actually really like that. Batgirl is stronger. Than, I'll happily say Batgirl is str probably stronger than probably Robin I'd say. 
Robin and Nightwing are definitely the most agile. No, I would definitely say Nightwing and Batgirl, sorry, are the most agile. But Batgirl is still freaking... She's got muscles. I definitely would say she's probably stronger than Robin because she is... as She's agile, but also has that strength. She's sort of like in the middle of the road when you're fighting with her. She does feel like a powerhouse, but at the same time, she's also using her speed to her advantage. She is... Probably strong, very strong in my opinion, but also very agile. She's the kind of fighter that I like, and like the person who's strong but also agile. She understands that. She knows that she's probably weaker than some of these muscle-bound characters, but she uses her strength and her agility and her small stature to her advantage, which I definitely think that's a major advantage of. It's even when I was studying martial arts, I went up against people who were like that, who were who were strong but also fast as well, and men and women. And I absolutely love that about the Arkham series, is that each character feels different. And in all honesty, I I actually think Batgirl is my favorite. Like I, nothing against like Batman, who I played for the entire series, but Batgirl's combat style was perfect for me. I I was it clicked for me. It instantly clicked for me the way she fought, the way she used her gadgets. It felt good to me. It felt spot on for me. It felt like the actual perfect fighting style for my character in any way, and also a fighting style that I tried to adapt to when I was studying martial arts. I really liked it. Now, she does also have another unique quality, which is her hacking ability. It really is just a borderline point and click. It's like, uh, look, click that, does this, does that. It's very simplified. Batman can't do it. She can do it. It's very simplified, but I did like that they added another wee unique thing to her instead of just her being really, really badass. But yeah, I, 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 really, I really wanted to like this DLC because Batgirl is one of the characters I absolutely love. But the only good thing about it, I just, the, 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 so not the only, the, the good stuff I have mentioned, like she, the fighting spell does, the, the, the exploring the island that you're in is actually kind of interesting. Hearing the banter with uh, Batgirl and Robin, and then hearing Joker and Harley mock you is actually really good. And also the boss battle at the end where you actually fight Joker and Harley, they do give some banter, but not that much. The overall DLC is just way too short. Like, the, the, there is only one side mission in, in this entire thing. I do not count collectibles as side missions. Like, there, is a, the, there are about three side missions, I'd say, in total. One, the side mission I mentioned, which you have to solve, basically, carnival game puzzles to get a little bit of an extra bit of story for the, the, this, the area, basically. It gives you a lot more about the story. And then the other ones are destroy all the balloons and destroy all the Harley in the boxes. That's it. That's the only ones, and I'm not collecting those by the thing. I did it in Batman. I've, I, I've done Riddler's trophy, trophy challenges and all the games, but I'm not going to do that in a DLC that is not on honesty, way too short, and doesn't have a lot to it, in my opinion. But at the same time, I, do, I will give them credit. Batgirl felt awesome. She felt absolutely awesome. And it actually, the, the reason I'm very disappointed in it is that it was too short. I wanted more. I wanted more Batgirl. I would pay... For a full Batgirl game, I would pay for that. If they could do, if they could get Gail Simone on it, I would buy that in a heartbeat. I would do it. I would. That would be an instant pre-order for me, in my opinion. If they made an entire Batgirl game with this focus, in my opinion, with her combat style and also getting that into that, and if they could get Gail Simone, on, that'd be absolutely awesome. But I'm not going to say anything else beyond that. But. I absolutely really, I really wanted to love this DLC, but overall the DLC is okay. Uh, it's way too short, and it doesn't have a lot of. But beyond do it, beyond the side mission where you find out why this island, why that, why this theme park was created on Royal Reg, and also the Joker Harley, there's not much to it in all honesty, and it's a bit disappointing in all honesty, and that kind of sums up all the Arkham episodes in a nutshell, in my opinion. I was expecting a bit more with this Batgirl DLC. I understand the Harley Quinn DLC being relatively short. I kind of do. But at the same time, I wanted a little bit more from this Batgirl DLC since they were hyping it up. But we didn't get a lot. We got maybe, you could, as I say, you could beat the entire thing in 15 minutes if you don't do any of the side stuff. And if you're pretty good at it, which I was. Uh, I beat in about 30, 45 minutes even doing the side stuff. Um... So yeah, I, I I just wanted more of that. I would gladly buy a Batgirl game. I've made that no secret. So yeah, I think that's all I've got to say about it, is that it was just massively disappointing, and I kind of wanted more out of it, which is kind of the problem with all of us Bat fans, I guess, or when you love a series this much, you're like, I want more. 
I think me and I think N7 said it best when we did the spoiler cast is we always want more, even if we're given something absolutely amazing. And yeah, I want more Batgirl. I want more Batgirl. I want I would buy a Batgirl game. I've I've said it three or four times in this video, but I would buy a Batgirl game. That's why I bought this DLC, even though I'd heard it was short, it was kind of underwhelming. I wanted to support Batgirl. I want Batgirl. I want a Batgirl game. I want Batgirl game. I want Batgirl game. I want Batgirl game. I would buy that in a heartbeat. Give me a Birds of Prey. At least give me a Birds of Prey game. Come on, please. I want to be. I want to fight as female superheroes. Just because they're badass. Point there. <laughs> but yeah. And if you're wondering uh, if I recommend. If you want to learn more about the Batgirl character, my recommendation is the Gail Simone run of the New 52 Batgirl. Uh, if I haven't stated, this is the. This, I bought the entire thing. This is all of Gail Simone's run, by the way. Uh, this is volume one, by the way. This is volume five, I think. Is that right? Yeah, volume one, two, three, four, five. Uh, if you want, in, this, in my opinion, is the definitive Batgirl. This is the Batgirl that I absolutely fell in love with. Um, and Arkham, the Arkham series definitely adopted some of her characteristics where when they did, when they eventually did. So, yeah, I love the character, but this DLC was just rather underwhelming for me personally, and I kind of wish they had done more with it, in all honesty. But I'm guessing they were crunched for time, but hopefully if people did buy this, and I do actually encourage people to buy it to show that we do want female superheroes. We do want that. We do want badass female characters in this in this in video games. We want that. And Batgirl is, in my opinion, one of the best characters they could do. They've already did Batman do Batgirl. Even if you do bloody st even if it's not Barbara Gordon, have Barbara Gordon there teaching the new Batgirl. Stephanie Brown, I know she's popular. I'll take that. But yeah, uh, but so yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. I do I do apologise for it being late. Uh, I would have got it out the day if I could, but unfortunately, as I said, I was having computer problems. But I still wanted to talk about this DLC because I wanted to, and I wanted to at least give my thoughts on it. So I don't blame Frogsteady for this being short. I still enjoyed it to an extent, but I will say it is not worth. It is not worth the price tag they're asking, if I'm going to be honest, unless you're a hardcore Batgirl fan. But I still would encourage people that if you have even the mildest interest in Batgirl, this DLC is at least worth a glance. Or go check out the comics. But I can't really say it's worth, like, I think it was like five or six pound, if memory sells me. So yeah, this isn't a review, this is merely my thoughts. But I, I always answer the question, so why not? Um... I think that's well wrap things up there. I hope you enjoyed it. If you played the Batgirl DLC, let me know what your thoughts are. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Would you like it? And of course, the more important question, would you buy a Batgirl video game? That's my question to you. That's the question for this video. Would you buy a Batgirl video game? Answer it in the comment section down below and give me your reasons why. Okay? I want to know if you would and why. And if not Batgirl, who else? Other than that, I thank you for watching. As always, I'm Scottish Warren Nato. I'll see you all next time. Ciao for now.